Hi, I'm back. Okay. So, just now, my earlier video, I, towards the end, I said that I'm going to share my testimony on how God transformed my life, my life as an ex transgender. I was an ex transgender from female to male. You know what transgenders like? Did you know how do they look like? Some people have only seen the women part. The male, male become female. They have seen that. But they haven't seen the, the female to male. You know why? Because female to male, we don't look. We don't, we don't have the pictures of that, of that, of that men, that, 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 the boyish, that girl's face. Because we were on testosterone at that time. Okay, the testosterone hormones make us look like a male with a beard, with the facial features, with the um, voice changes into a man. That is why you can hear my voice like a man. Even though I stopped taking testosterone hormones in 2015, I stopped injecting myself. Okay, so I stopped. I took testosterone hormones in 2013. Um, the reason why I took it is because I, firstly, society, media, and um, my lifestyle, my family lifestyle, because um, I come from from a broken family. Okay. And I know that my family members are watching this and it's live and I put it on public, okay? Because this is my testimony on how God saved me, how he changed my life, how he changed my life into being back at what made me as a female. That is why just now, on my, on my previous uh, live video I just made, uh, somebody maybe laughing because of how I was being jolly, I was being happy, I was you know making jokes and all that. But maybe I don't know why. Why did a person laugh on my? You know, on the like button, you can have the you know on the like button, you have the um, the like button and then you have the laugh button and then the laugh the laugh button and all that. So I saw the laugh button and it was like I don't know, but um, if she's watching now. Maybe because of my voice, she'll be thinking why I have a long hair, but my voice is man is a bit uh, rough. So uh, it is because I took testosterone hormones to be a man. I was a transgender. Transgender means okay in Bahasa Melayu they call it pengke. Okay, pengke is how I look like a tom I look like a boy. Okay. And my hair I really cut short that time. Thank you enough, Prema Aka. Thank you, Prema Aka. I call you Prema Aka. Okay, God bless you dear. You're a blessing to many. Thank you. Okay, so I cut my hair short. But I'm not only short, I even I even bald my head. I bought up my head, you know. I bought up myself. And I look typical man with a beard and the voice and um, my face my my facial features were were totally different when i show the before and after pictures to, to people who haven't met who haven't heard of my testimony before they were like is that really you so answer ma <laughs> okay so uh okay because i didn't bring my book my book is my book is with, is in another house in another place that I'm living in. I, I in I forgot to bring my book, so my book has all got the pictures. And those who have just seen me posted my testimony on the picture just now with my face and bota and all that. That was how I look like. But those who are going who are watching live now and it's on public, I will show you. Hold on, ah, my previous photo. Okay, because I saved it from my other profile. 
<sighs> okay, this is how I look like. This was how I look like on Thursday. Testosterone hormones just to be a man. Where I look, I look like a man. Uh, I can uh, how to say I I what is that word self made man okay not real man I was a self made man and seriously you're living in sin this is sin this is sin the Bible says clearly that you cannot become a male, a, a female to a male you cannot dress up i mean you can dress up I mean, now of course like it's a, it's a trend with red jeans and all that okay but the bible clearly says that a man that that a woman cannot wear men's clothes cannot cut the hair short into a man because god made us perfectly the way he made us in the womb and our in our mother's womb so he made me as a as a female Dia jadikan saya perempuan dalam kandungan mak saya. Okay, so from there I became. Okay, this is how I look like. Okay, those of you who 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 are still doubting, you know, am I am I a man? Am I am I still a man? No, this was how I look like as a man with the social hormones to be a man, which I'm not. I was born as a female, okay. I was born as a female. My mother gave her to me. Came out. The doctors, the doctor said, "Oh, she's a girl." Okay, that was me. Okay, but because of society, because of how I was brought up to be, because of how I was brought up to be as you know, and uh, my family, my my parents that I was, I didn't have proper love. Okay, I didn't have. The proper love that I needed. Okay, I stayed in. I stayed in with my dad most of the time. Mom, my mom was not with me because she didn't have the the custody over me. Only my dad had it. So I needed attention at the time. I my parents were divorced at the age of eight, eight years old. I around eight lah. No, no, no. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. They were divorced. Like, uh, when I was still, when I was, you know, was around five. Yeah, I was, I was still in Tarika. Tarika and I think behind sandwiches, that was in Tarika. Okay, so I remember clearly my mom, my mom after the divorce, she can only visit me in school secretly. Okay, as a mother, of course. Okay, so my mother visited me in school uh, secretly. And I had to go back home and didn't tell my, my my father or anybody that my mom came and visited me. You see that the the time at the time the stressful life of a six as of a five year old. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. So <laughs> and um living as a six years old, you know, I went through a lot. I still remember I still remember my parents were fighting over me, you know, the stress that I went through. Why I'm sharing this right now live is for parents who are going through divorce. I want you all to listen to this, okay? Please, if you want to divorce, if you want to fight, you want to argue with your, with your, with your spouse, your partner, please do it in privacy without your children looking because they will go through a stressful life in the future, like how I went through. Okay, so I seriously I hate divorce now. I see every people getting divorced. Divorce, I really hate it. I don't know why. I don't know why, why, why. I don't know what happened, but why divorce? Did you ever think about the about the child's child's uh uh your 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 children's growing up days? Have you ever thought a thing for yourself? I can say it's child it's selfish for your children. I don't know, but for me, yes. Okay, so for my case, I went through a lot of psychological problem because of my parents' divorce. Okay, my I was brought up by my for a while by my my mother. I had you know, visitation um, 
weekdays, I could go and see her. Okay, I think it was uh, during the weekends. Weekdays, of course, school schooling days, I have to stay. With, I, have to, I have to stay with my dad. So week weekday weeknights, uh, uh, weekends, I could I I be with my with my mom's side of the family. So you know, and then uh, being sent to babysitters and different different family members, the stress that I went through just to get the attention. I didn't have a mother's love. I didn't have a father's love. So I was seeking for love. I was seeking for attention at that time. Okay, and um, from there, I kind of, um, towards my childhood days, you know, and then because I was kind of also pampered in school, I, I pampered at home, sorry, I was pampered at home, and I was, Mostly brought up by my by my, my, my paternal grandmother, my father's grandmother, <laughs> my father's mother. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I saw so Regina. Okay, so I was brought up by my by my father's mother. So I was a bit pampered, and I for her I was the youngest granddaughter. <laughs> okay, granddaughter, as in not the youngest grandchild, but the youngest granddaughter. Uh, among us grandchildren, we my my father's side, we we are fifteen of us, fifteen including my brother. That I will that one I will I will tell you so what, okay? Including my brother, I think fifteen, fifteen or sixteen. I can't count. So you know, girls and boys. So I'm the youngest grandchild for her are my twin cousins boys okay so for me i'm the twin uh, uh, i'm not the twin sorry i for me i'm the youngest i'm the youngest uh granddaughter for her so i was kind of uh, being pampered okay so because of that i was also bullied i was bullied in school i was bullied at home i was i was uh we always fight you know children when we when they are kids we always we always get into a fight with, with, with with our our cousins and all that still until today I still love them and I still miss them. What do you expect? We are grown up, right? Okay. So um because I was brought up by my grandmother and my father's sister, father always goes out to work and all that. So I didn't have time to didn't have time to be to be with me. Work, 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 work. He was kind of a work workaholic. Just to bring me up okay that one I, I thank god that, that he did that okay and then later on in the years with well, the years to come um that married he remarried and i i shifted to KL with my stepmom and then my second mother i don't want to use towards that mom because uh i still love her i still love her I still I forgive her for whatever she she had done in my childhood life. I still forgive her. I still love her, and um, yeah, she's she's a mother to me. She's my second mother. Okay, but going through traumatic childhood days at that time, I don't want to elaborate about that. But when I'm being invited to churches and all that, I will explain. Personally, okay, those who want to ask me a lot of questions, they can ask me personally. Okay, um, from the second marriage, I have a brother, that's why I say I have a brother. Okay, from the second marriage, I have a brother, and um, because of the second marriage, they had commotion and and also misunderstandings and all that stuff. So, we had to leave. We had to leave and I went back to typing with my dad. Stepmom was in um, my my second mother, sorry, my second mother and my brother was in uh, was in KL until today. So she's considered a single mother and my dad is a single father. <laughs> okay. So um going through childhood was terrible for me. <laughs> you know, then later on in school I was I was bullied in school. Send it to I still remember. I was accused, I can still remember that day, Senator 2, Honor Chen Pao, I think. 
sorry to my friends for watching this, but I still remember that day because it was a traumatic day for me until today. It, it is still fresh in my head. Okay, I was accused of stealing when I didn't steal anybody from me. I was so innocent and I was bullied in school because of that. Okay, so where's my hand over here? <laughs> okay, so I was bullied in school. Standard two. That fateful morning, only afternoon. <laughs> okay, I was uh, I was accused of stealing, which I didn't steal, and I know I didn't steal. Okay, and when I went, I still remember that day when I refused to go because I know I didn't steal. You know, somebody sabotaged me in school. <laughs> And they dragged me out from the school and I cried. I didn't steal, I didn't steal. And then when they went, when they took me to the to the principal's office, uh, is it principal's office or was it the was it the teacher's room? I can't remember. I came clean. I came clean. And I know from that day, God was always with me. From that day of me being accused, being bullied in school, at home and all that. God was watching me. He was always there saving me. He saved my life. But then I didn't know. Okay? Because I didn't know much about the Bible at that time. I come from a Catholic background. Okay? Family members for watching this, please, to let y'all know. Okay? I didn't even have the chance to read the Bible. I don't even know what the Bible was about. Okay? I got to know about the Bible only when I was 16, 13, 13, 14, during my school holidays in KL, in my, in my father's parents' house. That's when I got to know about the Bible, and I, and I didn't want to believe about the Bible. Okay, so towards that day when I was in school, I was, uh, I was accused, being accused for, I was being accused for stealing, God was there. He was there, and I came clean. I think that would be my first testimony. <laughs> okay, and uh, I came clean. And I can still remember those accusers' face, faces. Sorry, I know I didn't see him. <laughs> okay. I can still remember when I came back from the class, they found out that I didn't steal. They were angry. And they became angry. Some more things happened. A lot of things happened after that. You know? And um, also, I still remember when I was in Senate 3, later on in, the, in my class, my I didn't finish my homework because it was maths. And I hated maths. Seriously, I hated maths. So I didn't, I didn't read the... I didn't do my homework because I don't know how to count, you know. And at home, I was hoping that that my that my dad was there to guide me to to do my homework. All I got was a caning because I don't know how to count at the time. I was kind of I was considered I was smart in certain ways, but when it comes to counting and all that, I was, I'm kind of a slow learner when, when it comes to maths. So if my teacher is, is, is watching right now, Miss Chua, Miss Amy Chua, my my standard four, standard five, and standard six math teachers is watching now. Teacher, are you watching? Okay. I was kind of uh, slow in maths. I needed a one to one uh a one to one teaching. So my 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 dad was uh, my dad Kind of, a, he didn't know how to do. He didn't know how to 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 teach. So if I don't know, if I don't know how to count, he will he will just not make it. Yeah, just not make it. Then he scold. He get angry because I don't know how to count. He didn't have patience. So cannot blame him also lah. Okay. And then after that, um, so I remember when I didn't finish my homework that fateful day or so. My math teacher was, uh, I was also bullied. I was laughed at 
in class, standard 3. Tiga kenangan. Just now was dua, as, standard 2, convent kelempau, dua terakai. Now, standard 3, the same school, convent kelempau, typing, tiga kenangan. Okay. My math teacher was Puan Cik Ta. I still remember her name. <laughs> I wonder how is she. Eh? Uh, I remember clearly. I didn't finish my homework. I was the only one in the in the class who didn't finish my homework. And what I got was it was an embarrassing moment in, in class. Where my class teacher kind of uh, she kind of uh, of course the rotan came, the wacking. And uh, she kind of stripped down my. I, I, I don't want to say about this, but I know I was being laughed at in, in class. I was being laughed at in class, okay? So my class teacher was, because of that moment, I didn't finish. I was the only one in class who didn't finish my, my maths, okay? Because I just couldn't do maths. Nobody understood. So there wasn't a one to one. With the teachers, and I was also seeking attention in, in, in school. So, my class, so I was being embarrassed in class. And I remember my, my whole class, they were, they were laughing at me. Okay? They were laughing. Everyone was laughing in the class. And you know how embarrassing is that? That moment. So, I. From then on, I hated Max. I just hated Max. You know, because of that embarrassing experience. Tiga kenanga. Then after that, my dad remarried. Because of that, I was so happy to leave the school. Seriously, I was so happy to leave the school because of... And I was so happy to leave the school. I got a new school, I got a new home in KL, everything. Bye-bye to my bullies in the, in the school. Thank God I didn't kill myself. <laughs> I didn't know how to kill myself at that time. You know? But children these days, at this age, they tend to kill they tend to kill themselves. They tend to commit suicide because of being bullied. Okay? They couldn't accept. They just couldn't accept. It's just pitiful for children. But to me when I was being bullied in school, it was the most happiest day that I was that I left. KL in, in standard, standard 3. After my dad remarried, I had to go to KL, shifted to KL. I was so happy I had, I left the school, you know, because being bullied, who, who, who wants to get bullied in school, right? So I left school and um, went to a new school without knowing that in the new school I was being bullied again. Then at four, I was being bullied again. And this time I was in a co ed school, a mixed school, boys and girls school. You know, being a girl, that is what I always thought. Being a girl, I would get bullied. You know? So, I remember my new school, standard four, Pat Zamrud. SR, SRK, no, uh, Sekolah Kebangsaan, SK Taman Seri Rampai. Tapak. My classmates, the boys were bullying me. He called, one of the Chinese boys called his parents. Because I was defending myself. I was defending myself. Okay, that incident I still remember. He's non stop bullying me. I got so irritated. What I did was, I took the pencil and I stabbed his hand. He was bleeding. The next day, complained to his father. Father came and scolded me. I went home. I cannot scold him for my own, my own. father and my, and, my, and my second mother because of defending myself. Because of defending myself. So I was like thinking, what is the use of being a man? Uh, what's the use of being a girl when you're, you're being bullied nonstop? Right? So I was being bullied in school, Senate 4. The day 
I just don't want to go to school. I didn't want to uh, go to school. Nobody understood why I didn't want to go to school. Because of that, that's why I had gastric. I, I had to eat. Hard to eat. I vomited. I made myself sick. Because I don't want to go to school. I want to take MC. I ended up in hospital. Because of being abused and stuff. And um, when I was in the hospital, I was given MC for one week. I was so happy I don't have to go to school and to see the, the, the bullies faces anymore. You know? So after that promotions happened between my both both my, my second mother and my, and my dad. We went back to Taiping, went back to a new school. I was praying to God, I don't want to go back to my old school, Common Clan Power. I don't want to see those those bullies. God kind of do that time really God was already there. So I think he answered my prayers. I didn't get back my whole school. I got a new school. That was my favorite school. Even though I was being bullied for a while. But that was my favorite school because I had the best friends ever over there. Okay? And the best teachers to, to look after me. Um it is uh, my school was Skola Mning uh Skola Mninga. Skola Rendah Kebangsaan. Richard Methodist typing. Woohoo! The MGS. I'm a proud Richardian until today. Okay, so when I entered that school, the best year of my life was the year where my classmate, my classmate came up to me, made friends with me, and shared the first gospel to me. John 3 16. How awesome is that? A 10 year old. Sharing the gospel to her classmate. She came up to me and shared John 3.16. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in, in him shall not perish but have his everlasting eternal life. That was the best gospel. Until today, I still remember. Until today, I still memorize that word. You know? So... When I was in when I was when I was in that school, I I was also bullied, I remember. But not as bad not as bad as Convent Clan Pao, not as bad as not 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 as bad as uh Taman Sri Rampai. I had the best friends. I still remember one of my good friends. Uh, sorry if I haven't mentioned your names here. Pamela, Shanti, Taranji, uh, and then a long lost friend. I don't know where, she, where is she now. Rohini, um, Raja Farah, uh, then there's uh, Mumtaz, um, and a few others. Lah. I can still remember. And Savarani, Tanmului. Okay, those were my closest friends ever. Okay. Uh, until from 5, we were kind of still close. And until today, we are still keeping it out on Facebook. <laughs> okay. Uh, if Pamela is watching, uh, her name now is Pamela Wong because she's, she's already married. So Pamela, if you're watching, thank you for always being there for me. And um, yeah. But also, I was still bullied. But not as much as the previous schools. But this one was just... Normal, normal life because the teachers were there to protect you in PMCS. Seriously, if you're back in that school, if you, if you send your children to, to that school. But this type of era, I'm not sure. This uh, this year, I'm not sure if the teachers are like those days. But the teachers back then, they were, they were so loving. You know, 19, uh, I stepped foot in the school 1995, teacher Methodist. Okay, 1995, and then. Uh, 1997, I left uh, class 76. UBS already have it. Okay, so I from there I needed more attention. I didn't have the attention from my dad because of what he went through with his previous marriages and all that. You know, so because of that, I needed. A father's love and a mother's love, and I kind of uh, mom was keeping my mom was keeping in touch with me, but she was kind of uh, also busy with work. So 
I was kind of um, I my life was just like from this person I go to from this person, you know. And sometimes I prefer to stay back. You know why? Actually, when I was in TMJS school, the teachers were like the teachers there were like my mothers. Everyone there was like my mothers because mostly they are most of I if I'm not mistaken, all the teachers were were mostly females. So they were like a mother to they were like a mother to us, you know. So okay, still like good. So they were like a mother to us. And most when I stepped foot in TMGS in 1995 at that time, I came back from from here yeah, typing. My father told the previous headmistress. Her name is Quantan Ku. I wonder how is she, where is she? Okay. Um, my dad told her to look after me, take care of me because I'm still new. And I think uh, he told her what I went through in KL. So, so she was really there for me. She made sure, but not only for me, but everyone in the, in the school, she was always there to, to, to look at. You know, she was always there to, to see how are we doing, not only me, but the other students, if I'm not, uh, yeah, the other students, you know, and she was like, a, she was like a loving, she was so loving to us, and uh, my, my, but the, the affection towards me was even more, more obvious, so some of my class, some of my schoolmates, they were kind of jealous, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know whether they're jealous or not, but I was bullied because of that. Yeah, I was bullied and, you know, but it was, this this bullying was not as terrible as the the, the previous schools. Okay, this one, the my new friends, my new friends were more understanding. They were more, we can, we can, we, we can get along very well. Lah. Okay, so this one, this school, the, 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 the bullying was, was lesser. Okay, and um, not many of them knew knew what I went through. So, hi, Auntie Gloria. Thank you. Same, same to you. Auntie Gloria Lawrence is my former neighbor's uh, daughter. And Auntie Gloria, uh, I think she, her, mom, her mom knows me quite well when I was young. So, she will know what I went through as well. <laughs> Okay, so um, but further what I went through, nobody, nobody knows lah. Okay, so bullying started and all that, and then um, my God sent one my classmate to share the gospel to me. My name is Selvarani, and uh, she she. She just came up to me and just asked me this question. Are you a Christian? I said yes. You know when we are kind of a child, childlike of person, we don't we don't know how to answer. So she came up and asked me, Are you a Christian? I said yes. Which which church do you go to? I said I I go to the I I, I attend Saint Louis Church in Taipei. Then 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 I asked her why, and then I asked her. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember what, what, what was the question, but I I did ask her, are you a Christian? And I said yes at the same time. And then uh, I, I asked her, what is John 3.16? Because, you know, uh, my uncle was watching, you know, my cousins and all that, they were they like to watch this uh, WWE, you know, the wrestling. You know? So they, 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 hi, Raja Farah. Saya tengah tengah share pasal pasal uh, sekolah zaman zaman sekolah kita dulu, okay? So uh, those days, you know, they had this, uh, I can't remember this person. Is it the Undertaker? He had always he used to carry this this name John three sixty, okay? So at that time, I didn't know what John three sixty. Every time you see on on the on the on the, on the WWE, whenever it comes out, raw, raw is war, war is raw, right? Okay, so this this wrestler will use John 360. 
So I always wonder why is this John 316? John 316. Okay. Ah, thank you, Auntie Gloria. You look like primary school girl when we live in Tapping Garden. Ah, thank you, thank you. Oh, so yeah. Okay, I'm ready. I'm already 34. Okay. So, uh, so she came up to me and asked and told me. I, I asked her, what is John 316? Every time I see you on this TV, yeah, John 316, John, John 316. So she, <coughs> she told me, John 316 is from the Bible. Huh? What is the Bible? Okay, I've never heard of this Bible before. And then she told me, nah, John, uh, you, just, you just use this word. She, she just, uh, it was so simple for me to memorize at that age, you know, at the age of 10 years old. Okay. So she, she gave me this word, John, John, just memorize it. For God so loved the word so much. It's not, it's not like a nursery rhyme, so I, that's why I, I still remember. For God so loved the word so much that he gave his only son, that whoever loves him, uh, that whoever believes in him will not, will not die but have internal life. That was the way of a 10 year old will, will, will memorize it. Okay, it's, 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 it's under like a, like a, like a, it's under like a, like a, Nursery time, right? Okay, so it was super easy. And then after that, uh, I started going back. She was sharing the gospel with me. I go to a house. Uh, mother will share the gospel with me, everything. And then uh, it started from there. My dad found out. Grandmother found out that I was going there, and then they kind of uh, they didn't let me. They didn't let me. Go to my to my friend's house because they didn't want me to know the truth. Okay, but and then because I had to listen to my my family, I had to avoid my friend because of obedience. I had to avoid my I had to avoid my friend, and I was like innocent at that time. Okay, I was innocent. So I had to avoid, I didn't know what was going on, so I just listened, I avoided her. When I avoided her, I kind of, I had, I went into a fight with her, you know, the pulling hair, the fighting and all that those days, and, and I was kind of jealous, why, why is she taking my best friend away, another best friend away from me, you know. So I feel, I started having a commotion in my life. When I was just that age, my own my my own fights with my cousins, with my family members. Until that one day uh, when I was twelve years old, I decided. I think it was I was eleven. Yeah, I was eleven. I decided why don't I, you know, I'm being bullied every time. Where's my mom? She's not there for me when I when I needed her, you know, and um. I decided, why not become a boy? You know, just be a boy. I had enough. I had enough of, of this um, life of being a girl, you know, being bullied and stuff. And uh, they, they, they used me for no, for no reason, for no apparent reason. They just used me and all that. So why not I just become a boy? End of story, that's all. So I started dressing up as a boy. At first, I didn't know how to dress up, so I just, you know, jeans, shorts, cut my hair short, everything. Set five, yeah, I still remember. Set four, set five, I started to cut my hair short from there. Okay. And also, I had to cut, cut my hair short because I, I had this uh, dandruff thingy in my head. So it, 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 I had this, this uh, scalp infection. So I had to. To cut my hair short at that time. Then I decided when I become a boy, dress up, dress up like a boy, wear, wear jeans and all that, you know. Then uh, walk like a boy, walk like a boy. Because at that age, uh, we haven't come to puberty yet, right? So at that age, we had to, we kind of, uh, we don't sound like a, like a boy yet. Okay, so boy sound sounded like a girl at that time. So obviously people would think that, that, that I'm a boy. So at the same time, why not? So because of the effect of bullying, 
because of the effect of, of being bullied, being abused, being uh, treated indifferently, being treated unequally. Okay, I decided to be a boy. I became aggressive. I became hot-tempered. I became who I wasn't. I became from a soft-spoken person. I became from a soft, loving person. I became so hard-hearted. I became hardened. My heart became hardened. I became so aggressive. You know, I don't know how to show love to people anymore. I got into a fight in school. Okay, and then to make it short, when I went into secondary school, it was an off and on. I was also, after that, I was confused about my gender. I was confused about, about my sexuality. I, in, we were all in girls' school. So just imagine, you don't have a, uh, you don't have a, uh, you don't have boys in the school anymore. And when you come into puberty at the age of 12, at the age of uh, 11, yeah, I came into puberty at the age of, at the age of 12. When I went into Form 1, that time, I was 30. I entered, uh, I entered school. And uh, when I entered, uh, when I entered secondary school, still a proud teacher in Sekolah Maringa Kebangsaan, teacher Materi Happy Girl School, eh? Okay. Uh, I decided I first entered that school. I was confused of my sexuality and the feelings, the feelings to, toward a boy wasn't there, but the feelings toward a girl was there, uh, female. So I, my first crush, I mean that lah, and mean that as in puppy love, as in crush, but the person didn't know was my senior, my senior in school, and uh, she was a prefect in school. And then, uh, without knowing my sexuality and my gender identity, I, I was being bullied because of that as well. And in school, I was kind of, uh, you know, and I want to call somebody. I call teacher, teacher, you know, teacher, teacher, uh, teacher, teacher, you know, like, like the word, you know, and I call my friend, I will call my I I got one of my good friends last year. and then you know it's like uh when I when I try when I, when I try to get close to my teachers, it's not about being it's not about being uh it's not about being how to say what is that word? It's it's not about I'm seeking attention for for you know to be popular. No, I was seeking attention. Because I didn't get the attention in school. I mean, I didn't get the attention I needed in the house. So I get the attention in the school through my teachers. Okay. So I had, so this new school, this uh, secondary school, we had a prime, we had a male and female teachers. Okay. So male and female teachers we had. And then uh, but mostly we had female teachers. Okay. So most of the female teachers, they are so loving. They are so, some of them are, one of my favorite teacher is uh okay, primary school, my favorite teacher was Mrs. Sia, uh Miss Chua and uh Quantan Ku. The the Guru Basa was uh Kwan Aini, Kwan I know I can't remember her name. Okay. Uh, that was the Guru Basa and uh Kwan Harbajan called. If Kwan Harbajan is watching, hello teacher. Okay. Uh Kwan Harbajan was my Class teacher in Center 6, Center 5, and Center 6. So, primary school was my, they were my, the, the teachers that I mentioned, they were my, they were like a mother to me. So, they were always there for me and uh, they, they, they kind of understand what I needed. Okay? So, because I know when I go back home, I can't I rotan, I can't have kidding, so I didn't want, so I better be in school, okay, without the rotan and without the kidding. Secondary school, when I first entered from 1, from 2, that was in, uh, that was in afternoon session. My English teacher was my favorite one, Mrs. Ui, okay, anybody remembers Mrs. Ui? Please leave a comment below there. Let, let us find let's find her. 
Okay, this is Zoe was my English teacher and she was like the best English teacher ever to go ahead. She's really retired. Okay, and uh, she was so loving. She was like a mother for us as well, our, our class. Wan Lee Po San was my, I think was Puni Lee Petang. Yeah, she was, she was also a loving, a loving, um, a lot of people they get scared of her, but when you know her, her true, her true heart, and she have a personal counseling with you, seriously, she's 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 like a mother for you. Huh. Those those who who haven't had a personal a, a personal uh uh how to say like a like a personal talk with with twenty four percent, you all will be thinking, oh, she was a bad she was a bad teacher just because of her looks because she was known as a disciplined teacher and a pioneer person. But personally, when you get to know her personally, she she's like a mother to you. She was there when when I tried to come into side in school because of being bullied and also I needed attention in, in in school. She was there for me. Okay, so yeah, I that time I tried to come into side really because I was being bullied and then and I was in form two or around form one, form two. I was I was being bullied. Okay. By my monitor class, my 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 class monitor. I don't want to mention her name because I know that her friends are watching. So I don't want to mention her name. Either her friends or her sister is watching. So those who know me in that class, dua, satu kosong dua, class one zero two and class two hundred probing, probing. What's it? Probing. I can't remember that name. Okay, I'm sure you all know who she is. Okay, so I was being bullied in school. I remember I always complain to the teacher, but then in defense, the teacher took her side. What to do? School. Okay, so uh, because of that, I tried to commit suicide because of being bullied in school. But I still stood strong because of my friend, my classmate. Selvarani from standard four until form five, we were in the same class. God had a purpose to put her in that class with me. She was there to share the gospel nonstop. She was there to 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 share the gospel and 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 to help me. You know, even though I tried to commit suicide, God sent her and a few friends. I was trying to commit suicide in the school bathroom, in the school toilet. I still remember that day. Okay, in the school in the school toilet, I tried to commit suicide. Uh, and then I I remember I took a hammer somewhere. I wanted to 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 hit my head so I can die. You know, blood will be going down. But as I was going to do that, God sent her and uh, another friend, Tan Mului, and I I think there's another girl. If I can't remember. I think it's a uh, Sharina. She came. They all came. They asked what am I doing in the bathroom. I said nothing. And then they said, "What are you hiding behind?" I said, "Nothing." And they asked, "Are you trying to kill yourself? This is drugs, you know." And then I said, "No." Actually, it was a, it was like a syringe and a red pill. I don't know what what was it. I just wanted to kill myself. That was the only way from being bullied and being from being bullied and being being uh being spoken bad of in the in the family. Okay, I was going through a lot in the house in my in my own house. Okay. Kena rotan, kena because I need to do my homework and all that. Okay, so I I just need to get away from from everything and just die. So I tried to do it in school, but really God sent them open the door, the bathroom door. I don't know how. I didn't. I I know I locked it, but then I don't know how. <coughs> they came. They reported to the to one person. <laughs> Mrs. Lee Po San, okay. I don't know what what is her Christian name. She's in the she she goes to Saint Louis Church, okay. And also, God sent her also to show the motherly motherly love that I needed, okay. So God really sent a lot of people in my life in this school, but I didn't see. I didn't know how. I didn't. I didn't know how how to understand that, okay. So, and when trying to kill kill myself and all that, I was like, oh, I really had no hope. Okay, but still at the same time, because of that, of my friend bullying me and all that, I decided 
back lah after after I went through a lot in life I decided at the age of 19 days of 20 and decided why not once and for all just for a while be a bisexual okay uh, in school I was known as a lesbian but I, but then I, I didn't know the meaning and then I was being bullied being called upon because I didn't know what is, les what is a lesbian so after that I had female crush and male crush so I was confused about my sexual identity at the time so I was known as a bisexual that means I like both genders okay I like both both genders also after that because I was seeking for love instead of love I misused the love as a last last and I went out with so many boys at the time. I went out with a lot of boys, and uh, but these boys they treated me differently. So I decided why not? Why not? I become after that when I was looking in thing, I I said that's it. That's it. Men are treating me like a bird, you know, giving my numbers away to other people. Why not? I decided. This is it. Better become a meal. One and for all. Once and for all, just change. Cut my hair short, spiky. Uh, dress up like a man. You know, just act like a man. Drink. I started to smoke. I started to take drugs. Get even. This time, I really, really, I really, really tried the first drug. Okay. And uh, my life was just going through a lot to make it short because <coughs> my voice is really getting uh pain pain really actually getting pain so and then uh from from there i went uh i i i remember i was robbed and i was being robbed also because of that la. Okay, being, being a woman i thought i wasn't secure enough i was i was robbed in school. i was robbed I was uh, how to say I was being used by men a lot. I didn't trust men anymore, and also because seeing my my, my parents are divorced, you want to trust some more men, <laughs> okay? In 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 our life and all that. Um, then I decided, okay lah, cut my hair short, dress up like a like a boy. Okay, I I had somebody at work at that time, uh, who knew that I needed. To change and that person guided me in getting all the men's clothes clothes and all that and then when i got my, my my clothes and all i i i had my first what is it my first crush my first girlfriend in good thing itself you know she's really married and she was a malay so i fell in love with a malay girl and uh, because she couldn't accept she couldn't accept who I was. She didn't want. She just couldn't. So she she just uh, ignored me, ignored, ignored my calls without telling me why and all that. Then later on, I kind of uh, many years to come, I became even more aggressive. I became even more 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 determined to be a man. I became more like a. I just needed a change, you know. I became a playboy after that. I because after that I, I realized women also is doing me like that. Man, man is like this. Women also so better I become a playboy. I just find girls, go out with them, sleep with them. Okay, then uh, went out. But the worst part was going clubbing. You know those who are clubbers, you all you all know, you know, with the nice music and all that. Get drunk, get drunk. You know what the hell you're doing, what the heck you're going through and all that. Okay, so I became drunk. I was an alcoholic later on in life. Sorry, I just couldn't breathe because of my of my block nose. I was an alcoholic. Uh, 
I became an, an alcoholic. Actually, I started, the, the, the thing is, I started drinking, I started having my first taste of beer when I was, what, 11? I think I was, I was just, can't remember, but I know I had my first taste of beer when, during a family function. And then I saw my dad drinking and said I wanted to taste. So, I had my, my first taste of beer, I think at the age of 8. It was a, it was stout, it is stout, okay, that, that was my first um, liquor, and then after that, liquor on, I was influenced into drinking brandy by my grandmother, Madam Agnes and Tennessee, okay, that is my grand, my maternal, my, my paternal grand, grandmother, she introduced me to Brandy and I wanted to taste brandy with shandy. Okay, so first it was shandy after I became brandy. <laughs> okay, so uh, because she wanted to, she wanted to have, she wanted to take that because of cold weather. Her body, she couldn't handle the, she couldn't handle the, the cold whenever it rains, so her head will be painful, her arthritis is very painful. So to cool down her body, she will take brandy. So I was like, what does it taste like? Grandma, can I taste a bit? And yeah, yeah, so she gave me to, to taste. And then I, I cannot scold from my auntie because uh, I'm too young. I'm too young to, I'm too young to have it. Okay, and then also another thing was, uh, family members are going to it because uh, they take sides in the family. That's why I always I always get into that. So the hurt, the hurt and the unforgiveness is always there in my life. You cannot forgive. That's why I don't have love at that time. I didn't have love. I don't know how to show love. Because of taking sides, you know. <clears throat> like uh, that person is more important for you than me. You know? So that was the hurt that I went through. You don't know how hurtful it is when your when your own parent does that to you. They take sides. So yeah, back back to my drinking habits. I was an alcoholic at the age of twenty one. I started I started to drink heavily. I <coughs> could take my clubbing every night after work just to really stress. Clubbing, 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 drink, 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 drink. Drink. <coughs> <coughs> I started drinking and uh, bringing in uh, girls into my into my room and all that lah. And then I became wild. Became wild. Even more stressful was work and my former girlfriends who who just used me for money and also other things lah. Don't mention about it. So what determined me to take the social hormones was when uh, in 2013 when I was really finding a way to cover my my woman's voice. I look exactly like a guy. Right? I need to show you my, my, my I need to show you my photo how I look like before hormones. Now wait right, my picture. Hold on, uh, give me a minute. Uh, huh? Yeah. So before hormones, you can see the before hormones is this one I'm pointing at. This is before hormones. I still look like a guy. Before hormones, uh, before taking the testosterone hormone hormones. My voice was still, was still female voice. My voice was still, I didn't have beard and all that. So just cut my hair short like that. So this was before hormones, okay. So that was how I look like. Really cut my hair short. I really walked. I really imitated a man's walking, a man's style of walking and all that. So after that, when I, I just needed. You know, 
a man's voice because I look like a guy enough already. Just the voice only. The voice only catch out. The voice was like, ah, they really found out you are, you are, you are a punkit. You are a trans. You are a transgender. Okay, because you don't have the, the you don't have the the, the man voice yet. So I was so determined until I decided find a way to buy one. Got it illegally from illegally from my friend from a friend of mine. Then it was I bought one is uh I bought it for twenty ringgit, twenty ringgit for five infuse. I will Google it for you on how it looks like. I was using Sustenon 250. Here it says they were selling it for 165. You see the price, 165 for 12 patang. But I bought it for 20 ringgit and 20 ringgit for 5 MPOs in one box. And I had to inject myself uh, one, how much, uh, three weeks once. Every three weeks once, I have to inject myself at the box illegally without getting a doctor's prescription. Better. Excuse me. So from there, from there, I started. After one year, two years of hormones, this was how I look like. Two years of testosterone hormones. Is it more? <laughs> okay, that was it. Okay. So the before and after. That is before testosterone and after testosterone. Two years, the effect. Okay, so that is the effect of the hormones in the person's body. That year, Itself, my mom's sisters were sharing the gospel to me. And uh, when they were sharing the gospel to me, I was kind of uh, reluctant to hear. I didn't want to hear. I just kept running away from that. I decided why not give it a try. Lah. We go to this, to this new church, you know, uh, this new church that I, I haven't heard before. And then I entered the when I entered the church, Shukana Assembly of God typing, I entered the church. The first thing I told them, you know, because when you're a transgender and all that, you're so involved in the transgender uh, activities, you're so involved in keeping your rights as a transgender, you know, and you are you are educating people about big transgenders and activities and all that. You are so happy. You enter the church, you you tell the the pastors all that. I thought, I, I didn't know, okay, but they were like welcoming me with love. They were welcoming me with love, regardless of who I was, even when I was with hormones. And I told them, I'm actually a born, I'm actually a girl, but I'm taking hormones to do like, like a man. And um, and uh, I come from him, yes. And without realizing it, I saw one of my seniors is in that, in that church. My father is a pastor. I was like, okay. Pastor pernah dengar aja. Then I remember, hey, Sevarani was preaching the gospel to me in Senate 4. She came from the same church. You see how God works? From that year, 1995, from the same church, same, same church, same pastor, the same pastor who told everyone to evangelize in schools and in the house at work. Okay, in bringing the... the, the in bringing the, the people to, to God, that is how he brought 
and then uh, that is how my 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 the gospel was being planted inside me in 2000 uh, in 1995 sorry by my friend Sarah. and came from the same pastor who preached that same topic called evangelize and i came back to that same church in 2013 how many years ago see how god works in our lives okay without me realizing it and then from there i kind of uh okay they accept me for who i was i was so happy you know? but then i ran away because some people didn't accept me as who i was they were forcing me to change i was like you cannot immediately change the person that is not the right way to that is not the right way to talk to a to a target. Okay. They don't know how to approach the transgender. Okay. So sorry, yeah, my hair, my hair looks interesting. Okay. So what they what I did was because of their attitude, because of the way they they the way they, they treated the transgender, my my church pastors they were nice, they were okay. They were okay with me coming to church okay it's just that other people so i ran away i didn't go to church for like one year two months one year i can't remember okay so after what happened was god revealed a lot of things about me being a transgender to other people and i didn't know about that at that time until i really really started christ in 2008 So I ran away from God. I decided why why are these people trying why are these people doing this to me? You know, I want to be who I am. You cannot force a person to, to be like that. Okay. So I was like, this is not right. You know, you are a Christian you are you are a Christian. This is not the right way to to speak to people. So what I did was I did the worst. I said yes to God in 2013. I said yes to Jesus Christ. I accepted Jesus Christ in 2016. I accepted Jesus Christ in 2013. But I backslided. I came away. I came away because I don't want to face the people. I still love God. I was serving Jesus Christ. I was serving God. I was still sharing the gospel on, on Facebook and all that at that time as a transgender. And I was known as a transgender Christian. I know some of you are thinking there's no such thing as transgender Christian. That was my life. I was living as a transgender Christian, faithfully serving God, loving God, doing things what God needs me to do. Okay. And uh, I had my first water baptism. I had my what baptism of the Holy Spirit. During that year, so I think I had my water, uh, my baptism of Holy Spirit in 2014, 2015. You know, being a transgender Christian, I saw a lot of miracles happening in my life without knowing, without knowing what what is going to happen soon. And then throughout that year, throughout those two years of taking hormones and living as a transgender, God still speaks to me in dreams. And visions you know he still spoke to me being a transgender and then uh, I kind of uh, I was like thinking why is he doing this to me you know so I didn't understand I love to read the Bible I was really reading the Bible God really opened my eyes after that being a transgender Christian God opened my eyes to read the Bible I was understanding the scriptures but whenever it came Whenever I came to the words, Sodom and Gomorrah, I closed the Bible. Whenever I came to the scriptures of homos, uh, about God saying no to homosexuals in the Bible, it talks about it. Okay? I had to close the Bible. i give you a verse. Homosexuality. In...
This one you are doing now. Now Google is not showing it anymore really. You know why? Uh, give me a moment, yeah? Okay, no man. Okay, when I read this, verse 1 Corinthians, six nine to 11, it talks about homosexuality, right? I close the Bible. Let me read it out to you. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually, the nine, neither the sexually more immoral, nor idolaters. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality and also women, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revivals, revilers nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such was some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. When, it, when you know, I was really serving, I was really faithfully uh, obeying God's word. Every time I read the Bible, I obey God's word. And when it came to this, words that, homo, that those who are practicing homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom of God. I was like, why are you telling me this now, God? Are you sure? You know, I was like, how come homosexuality is inside the Bible? So, uh, I got angry with God. I closed the Bible. Okay. And then there was, a, I think there was, I think another one that I saw about homosexuality written in the Bible. Another one, I can't remember which one. Also, it was, uh, also it was, uh, I had to close the Bible, okay? And every time God says something that, oh, what I was doing is wrong, I got angry and closed the Bible. I might as well read it, okay? I only will take the words that, that, that satisfies my heart, that, that, that satisfies my need, and, and I want to follow that. But what, but what the Bible says about, about things that I cannot follow, I don't want to follow, I ignore it. That is what sinners are doing right now. That is what people are doing right now. They only want, uh, they only want sugar coating scriptures for them. That was how I lived it. As a sugar coating I was really, really following his ways. I was really obeying some of the some of the words because I want to be in his kingdom. But when when that one shows I'm a homosexual and I cannot I cannot uh be in his kingdom because I'm practicing a homosexual lifestyle. I was so devastated. I was so ah yeah you know so I kind of uh, I didn't want to understand that I closed my way. Mala somebody. Okay and I have this uh I have uh NLT Okay. I bought I got this Bible because I wanted to read, I wanted to know more about, about God's word when I was a transgender Christian. Okay? I got this in 2015. On the way on repenting. In 2015. I got this Bible. 
life application study bible so when i went through that verse 1 corinthians 6 9 to 11 on homosexual guess what i read in the study application let me read out to you all okay Christians needs okay we are uh, okay first time down here where I hide it six first nine yeah six first nine what what they actually talks about it. Male prostitutes refers to those who practice homosexuality. The temple of the temple of Apollo employed men whose job it was to fulfill the sexual desires of male male and female worshippers. Some attempt to le le legitimize homosexuality as an as an acceptable alternative lifestyle. Even some Christians say that people have a call, have a right to choose their sexual preference. But the Bible specifically calls homosexual behavior a sin. Okay, Leviticus 18, 22 to 29. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. Verse uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 9 to 11 talks about homosexuality. Christians, <clears throat> okay, this verse, this, this, this explanation was the one that really uh, taught me on, on, on why, on how real, on how Christians should really treat homosexuals. Okay? Christians must be careful, however, to condemn only the practice, not the people. Please understand this. Okay, if you want to share the gospel to homosexuals, to LGBT people, don't condemn them, but condemn only the practice. You must show love to them. Okay? Those who commit homosexual acts are not to be feared, ridiculed, ridiculed or hated. They can be forgiven and their lives can be transformed. The church should be a heaven of forgiveness. And healing for repentant homosexuals without compromising its hands against homosexual behavior. When I read that, I was like thinking back, okay lah. My pastors didn't ostracize me. They make sure they make sure I I'm I'm loved. Okay, and then I decided to go back to the church. Okay. So but also because of family members, they will contact me. They don't know how to share the gospel. They don't know how to, to they don't know how to, they, they, they are feeling love, but they don't know how to, you know, how to approach a transgender and tell them it is wrong. What you're doing is wrong, but loving God is right. Okay? So, I, how to say, because of the because of that condemnation, I fell back, I backslided, I started taking drugs, I started becoming even more more addicted to to to, to the drugs and, and alcohol. But I quit smoking. I was a heavy smoker. I quit smoking. I only smoked one in the room last time lah. Okay. I my hair got. Ah, somebody might have tell me how to adjust my hair. Thank you. Okay, so my I was taking drugs or some drugs. The drugs that I was taking was uh the drugs that I was on was known as ice, shabu, methamphetamine. I don't have to pronounce it, but it's man. So I was addicted to it. And then one night I was high on the drug. I was high, I went to bed. And then God gave me a scripture. Being a transgender Christian, God still loves me. He never failed me. 
he never he never let me down he didn't let me he didn't let me uh, fall I mean he had God you know even though he never let me fall but there are times that he let he let the enemy he let that he let uh, Satan like how he like like how uh, Job Job's Job story not Job Okay, Job, uh, there is a verse in the Bible where Job uh, is so faithful to God that uh, he's so faithful to God that that um, God let Satan uh, give the permission to Satan to to bring him down, try to bring him down. Okay, so in our in our lives also, God put us to test. Okay, so when he put us to test, uh, when he put us to test, he still loves us. He wants to know how far we have fallen, how far we have, uh, we have uh, repented, how far have we have we come through. Okay, I will need to put the fan on me a moment because I'm judging the. So that's uh, he he loves he loves me. So he will he will he will he gives me how to say somebody is calling so I need I need to answer the, the, the phone it's okay never mind. So he will put me he gives me into trials and all that and to see me fall you know so to know what I went through. So when I when I was high on drugs on that on that mess I I fell to sleep and then he gave me a verse. I woke up, I opened the Bible and you know what I saw? I'm fighting for you. So you all will know what what we got give me. Revelation chapter two verse five. Repent. Verse 5. Revelation 2, verse 5. Look how far you have fallen. Repent. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand. Your lamp stand from its place among the churches. I was angry with God after that. I read it across the Bible and I put it away. I put the Bible away. I kind of uh, I was angry. Why you have me to repent? What did what did I do wrong? I thought you loved me. You know, because I was praying how I you know when I was taking the when I was taking the eyes I was Telling God, I'm still a Christian, like you understand what I went through. Better I die and then I will be with him. That was my perspective, my, my perception of thinking class. Okay. But he gave me that verse to repent. And I was angry. I didn't see the Bible for at least three weeks, two or three weeks. I didn't want to open it. The day came when I had to go back to typing. And I went through some trials in my life when I was in typing. I stayed at my auntie's house. This now this is my mother's sisters. Okay. My mother's sisters, I stayed in their house, uh, one of their house, okay, in his house. <laughs> and she the night the night before I went to sleep, 
during during the day, one of my auntie, Auntie Margaret, she gave me a verse. One one John. One John chapter one verse nine. See I have the Bible with me. Just to, to read out to you all. Uh. God has something for you all today. <laughs> okay? One John <coughs> Hey, it's one John. One John, chapter 1, verse 9. But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Then, verse 10 continues, continues to say, If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that His word has no place in our hearts. So if we don't, we tell God, I ah, we never sinned lah. God like No, right? We have to confess our sins to Him. So what I did was, I confessed my sins to Him. But I didn't confess that I was taking the hormones. I confessed all my sins from, from, from young to what sins I've done and everything and all that that night, that whole night. First, at first I was scared. I was scared to face God. Because when I was in the previous churches, I didn't know about this confession, this thing. All I knew was confess everything to that person. And I think God, God will confess. And we are scared to tell the confession to that person. You know? Because that person, when we confess, it seems that person will that person will will say it on behalf of or say on say it on behalf of, of us to God. But Bible says that there's only one main, one mediator, and it's Jesus Christ and God. There's no others, okay? Only Jesus Christ. You confess your sins only to Him, and He will forgive you. That is what I did. So I, I confessed my sins later on. Every single sin that I kept, every confession I didn't, that I didn't confess to that person in the previous church. I confess it all out to God. And guess what? That whole night, God was working in my life, in my dream. He was cleansing my, my, he was cleansing my spirit. He was cleansing all my sins. Through this type of dream, I dreamt that I could see my, myself vomit, vomiting out all the phlegm. And my face was, was, my face was pale. Because of all the sins being cleansed out. Cleansed out, washed out, washed out. Because God, God, God was God accepted it and he was cleansing everything. And there was a warfare, there was a warfare between God, God's holy angels, the heavenly armies, and Satan's armies. Okay? There was a warfare. Because once I started to confess my sins to God, directly to him, nobody else, directly to him, every single sin. God was uh the enemy was very, very angry. Satan was angry because I confessed all the sins that I was actually doing, doing what he wanted me to do. I confessed it. I repented. He was angry. And uh, because of that, my life changed after that. But I didn't confess about the hormones yet. Okay? I didn't confess about, about me taking the hormones. Uh, later on, only when my when my senior pastor was uh, talking about breaking of the curses, when he was talking about breaking of the curses, that was the time when I, you know, breaking of the curses. You need to the breaking of the generational curses. Where I went back home, we all did this thing. It's one month uh, Bible story, uh, Bible topic uh, of the breaking of the gen generational curses. What he did was putting going on everything, and then towards the end end of the of the topic finished already, he took the he asked us to write down everything. Both sides of the family. So, but because I didn't attend because I was working, so I had to copy copy everything to my both, both my aunties because both of my aunties had connection with my with my father's side of the family also. One one of my auntie and my great. Auntie Margaret is married to the Anthony side of the family. So I copy everything from her also. The curses because there are 
we are also related to that what the classes were brought down to her also was brought down to me so the classes were all, were all brought down and then after that when we went to church before going down my senior pastor said okay we are going to we are going to go down and burn everything and burn fire burn, burn all the classes before we do that uh, let us all kneel down and pray and weep to God and ask God for forgiveness of our of our ancestors. Our ancestors' curses that was brought down to us. We ask God to forgive it and to wipe it out and to break it, to break the chains in Jesus' name. So what I what what God did was uh, we prayed, we wept. And somehow the Holy Spirit uh, convicted me in in telling no to taking hormones anymore. I don't want to be a man. That was one of the curses. What I did was I really want the curse to be broken because I really want to obey God. This time I really did it. Got out of my seat. Next day, my last MPO. Actually, I wanted it to be the last MPO. But God made a way for me not to take the last ampule was when I broke the ampule to, to inject, one of the glass went inside. A small piece of glass from the ampule went inside the the the, the hormones the liquid. It's dangerous, you know, if you if you if you were to if you were to pull it out, okay, from it. When you inject, definitely one of the small pieces will go inside your blood, inside your veins and eh, inside your muscles and you will fall and you will get sick okay so i couldn't find a way to you because sayang you know you buy uh, then sayang you know the the, the balance of the, the balance of the the things will be there and then when you want to when you want to pull it out definitely a small a small little piece of glass will definitely be inside the syringe already Without you knowing, when you inject yourself, you won't know whether you your your the hormones together with it, you it, it will it, the class will definitely go inside your body, right? So God made a way that how also the ampule the glass broke inside and I had to throw it away. That was my last ampule, <laughs> my last ampule to buy. So I after that. Got up from my seat in, in the church, told my auntie, tomorrow I'm going to shave off. I'm going to shave. I'm, I want to be a new person. They didn't believe. Okay, never mind. Next day before going to church, uh, before going to work, I was in the cooking uh, after the shave. Before going to work, I went to be inside the bathroom. I was like, shall I shave? You no, know, because I really, I really kept. So neatly, somehow with, 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 the, with the design and everything, you know, so neatly and it's like, sayang lah, you know. Want to shave, don't shave. Want to shave, don't shave, I was thinking. Then I was like, shave lah, we just shave. Okay, I already broke the curses, already broke the curses, but then I shaved, right? So what I did was, I went in front of the mirror, shave with my hand, shave with my hand, look at myself, I'm going to, when I shave, because what I did yesterday, what I did yesterday, I need to do it. Go to the shaver, shave it off everything. Shave off everything. I I told my I told it I told the beard goodbye beard, bye bye. Going to go off. Bye. After that, um, shave off. After Monday, everything after I bathed, I came out from the bathroom. Don't get came up from the bathroom, secretly going inside the inside the toilet. I inside my, my inside my room to change. Told uh because my auntie was cooking, so the bathroom was here, my room was that side. So I do I I I have to go through like that without her seeing me first. I want to give her a surprise. Then after that I I went to I went to bathroom. I went to change everything. Came up from came up from the room. Came up from the room. I went to my auntie and I told her, "Okay, me turn behind. See." I said, "Wait, I'm cooking and cutting." I said, 
stop for a while, you stop the cutting. Just turn around and see how it looks like. The minute she turned around and she saw, Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, you shaved. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and she was like, the Lord. She was really happy. She was praising the Lord. Then my dad also saw after after that, after work and all that. He didn't realize and I went back to work. And I went to work. He he took me from he brought me back from work. He didn't notice that I shaved because he said he didn't want to look at my face because I look like a man and I, and I had a beard. He was super depressed. He was super super sad. So he didn't he didn't realize when I went back inside the room and I came back after work. He dropped me off in my in my auntie's house and it changed everything. I heard from outside. My auntie, my uncle said, "Did you see? Did you see your daughter? She really shaved, you know." They said, "Really? I didn't see that." Then what I heard was. I heard my father ran inside the room, opened the door just to see how I looked like. And he was so happy, he was so excited after that. The next day, you must see his face shining. He was so excited, he was so happy because I changed. Change. And then uh, from then on, my life really changed from backlashes from the from my friends, from my LGBT friends. Uh, not, not, not say backlash, like, just that they didn't like what I'm doing now, sharing the gospel, the what I'm doing. They didn't like me sharing my testimony and uh, they offended me. There were no friends, only a few friends that were friends, they were still friends with me. So, so they were still friends with me and then they were, they, and, wait, 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 I, I'm sharing my testimony. I'm, sh I, I'm sharing my, my testimony. I'm doing work. So, uh, so they, they were, they didn't talk to me at all. And then, um, and then they were they were like frustrated, okay, because I changed. So I'm still friends with a few of them. I'm still close with a few of my transgender friends because I treat them as 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 as, as I just treat them as, as who they're supposed to be. I feel God God opens their, their heart and opens their eyes. So and then so we have to show love. Show love to them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. Don't uh don't uh, judge them, okay? Yes, God asks you to judge, but judge rightfully, okay? Judge with love, okay? Go there, talk to them, uh, be with them, uh, show support, show God's love to them, and then um, you have to you have to show more and more love to them, lah. That that's all is my advice, lah, for for now. And then uh, what I experienced was after that I, I, I had love but I didn't know how to do approach my friends after that. Until later on in life, uh, later on a few years later, I I got to know that the, I wanted to really tell my testimony to other people. I really wanted to tell my testimonies to, to others. I I kind of uh, I don't know how how so I went on Instagram, I went on Facebook, I keep on sharing, sharing, sharing until I wrote, I wrote my book. I, I, I wrote my blog first, my testimony blog. So through my blog, I got to know this, um, I got to know Pastor Edmund Smith. So Pastor Edmund Smith was the one that, um, that gave me the encouragement. Okay, instead of condemning my friends, just be in their shoes at the time when people come and share your gospel. When people come and share the gospel to you, how do you feel? That was the same thing. I said, correct or so lah. So what I do was, what I did was, uh, I, I, what do you call this? Uh, what I did was, yeah, I followed what I followed what he said, and he, and just show love to them. Just accept them for now as they are, and then you show love to them. Okay, so just don't condemn them. What they are living now. Just like God handled, you pray for them. We we all will pray for them. That is what we are doing. We pray for them and and uh, do what we can do for these people. Okay, don't condemn. Don't condemn. Just show love. If you have a friend who is like that, if you have a family member who is like that, okay, you're a Christian and you have a family a family member, but you don't know how to you don't know how to approach this type of, of people. Okay, you don't know how to approach them. You start to condemn them. 
Of course, they run away from you. Like how I did. I ran, I ran away from the people, not from God. I still love God, but I ran away from the people because they don't know how to show. They don't know how to to approach you. They don't know how to to show God's love to you. They don't know how to really show. They don't know how to 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 share the gospel to a just and there. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. So instead of provoking them, don't provoke them. Show love. Okay, hug them. You see, you see them. You hug them and you pray, pray for them. Okay. Uh, and then uh, another thing is, uh, always pray and ask God. Like what I do, no. Every time when I go out and makan or or I hang out with with few people, I'll see this. I'll, I will just see. Okay, there's a tomboy then. In the in the restaurant, there's a tomboy in this in this shop. Okay, I look at them. I pray in my heart. Ask God, Lord Jesus, protect them, be with them. Like how you have, you have changed me, you, you can change their life as well. I am saying in, in Jesus' name, Amen. I pray in my heart and I look at them because God knows that I pray for that person. Right? So all you need to do, you are scared to approach these people, look at them and pray for them. Don't condemn them in your heart. If you condemn them in your heart, are you rightful? Are you, are you righteous in your heart? Think of that. Okay, think of that. Don't don't condemn them. Okay, if you condemn, I don't know. I don't know what to say already. <laughs> okay, so that's all my advice is to give you. Okay, so I need to go because there I'm getting calls coming in uh, because I have an appointment in shower. So anything, I didn't bring my book. So for you all to, I didn't bring bring my book for you guys. To look at and to buy so uh, just go through my albums in facebook just go through my albums in facebook uh, the albums will show you testimony uh, my my book there you can just go to the testimony book so it's inside the album and uh, the price is then yet and uh, you want to buy it for your family members and buy it for yourself you want it you want to share to others inbox me let me know and then we will arrange posting and uh if you're in Ipo, I will pass it to you. If you're in outside, if you're if you're outside of Ipo, I will post it to you. If you're in typing, I'm going back to typing on uh, the 23rd. Buy it for me then. I can pass it to you. Eh? But those who are in KL, who is in Laka, who is in wherever you are outside from, from Vera, instead of typing in Ipo, give me your address and I'll find a way to post it to you. Okay. Shalom. God bless. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I think I've seen the live, huh? it's already 1 hour and 42 minutes. It's going to be 1 hour and 43 minutes. I'm sharing my gospel. I, I'm sharing the gospel and also sharing the testimony. I know I didn't pray, I know I didn't pray before sharing, but but uh, I know while sharing it, a lot of you are, uh, are happy to be here and, and to know why I am like this now. Why is my voice still like that? And, oh yeah, to tell you the truth, and to tell you one more thing. Uh, I'm still shaving because I don't know how to get rid of this beard. I'm still shaving because of the effect of the, of the hormones. Even though I stopped in 2015, I'm still shaving and uh, finding a way to not shave anymore, finding a way to, to get rid of this of this, uh, of this this facial of this beard. I'm still shaving. I don't know if you can see it. Huh? Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Huh? Where is it? Somewhere here. I'm still shaving. Well, you all can see, but never mind. Um, give me your tips. Give me tips on how on how to get rid of this in inbox. Okay. Uh, need any? If you all need anything, please inbox me. Those who have my number, WhatsApp me, call me, and then uh, if you want to be a, a befriender, if you want to be a be befriend befriender for 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 your for your LGBT friends. Uh, please go to please go to Edmund Edmund Smith Pastor Facebook. Contact him, and you can join R RLM if you're in Malacca. Join RLM Real Love Ministry, and uh, join join Victory Meet. Uh, it's actually V Meet, and it's a uh, and it's known as uh, the full name is Victory Meet, but short form we made it into V Meet. We're having it in Penang next year, 2020. So you can be a B a B a B vendor, fifty ringgit for one whole month. Again, fifty ringgit for one whole month. 
Ah, uh, fifteen ringgit for a year. Sorry, sorry, fifteen ringgit for a year. Ah, uh, food provider, everything. So you been I the 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 BB classes will be in I I that for you to learn the sexual orientation. There are a lot of sexual orientations. Okay, so you can buy the book for five ringgit. You contact Pastor Edmund Smith. Ah, uh, you find on on Facebook he has a profile. Edmund Smith Pastor, or you can go to the to the Facebook page called S I M B. He she is my brother. Okay, ah, uh, go there and contact him. He will guide you. Okay, God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye. Love you all. Where can I? Okay.